Hello, everyone. Welcome into WRHU's The Locker Room Diversity in Sports Special right here on 88.7 FM WRHU. I'm Tino Patino, and joining me today is former men's basketball star for the Hofstra Pride and current guard for the Utah Jazz, Justin Wright Foreman. Thanks for coming on today, Justin. Thank you for having me, Tino. I appreciate this. Now, first things first, how have you been holding up? How's your family doing with the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, everything is good. Um, I really ha have no complaints. Um, everybody's been safe for the most part. Everybody's been really eager to go outside and, you know, you know, back to normal life. But, you know, this is our new normal, unfortunately, but um, things will get better. But everything is good. Um, my daughter's fine. She's seven months now, so I've been trying to spend as much time as I can with her while I'm home and before I start my workout. So everything's been fine. Now, speaking of the pandemic, that's ultimately what put an end to Hofstra's season last year. But for you, was it special to see them make it to the tournament for the first time in 19 years, some of the guys you used to play with? Um, it, it was definitely one of those, one of those uh, proud moments. Um, you know, we haven't been there in so long and for it to happen now, especially, you know, because we missed it my freshman year. And, you know, we got close and close and close. And for us to now actually get over that threshold is, is something special. And, you know, I'm just extremely proud of the guys and, you know, extremely proud of, you know, the coaching staff for, you know, like th this was our vision the whole time and we finally accomplished it. Now you just mentioned accomplishing your goals. Well, in 2019, you were drafted by the Utah Jazz in the second round. Can you explain to our listeners what it's like to make it to the league? Uh, it, it's a it's a definitely a different feeling. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the Utah Jazz for you know um, actually you know investing their draft pick in me uh, for the opportunity. I appreciate that so much. Um, but it, it's you know it was very eye opening you know just to see my dream after four years actually come true, and you know all the work that I put in. Everybody hear these stories about me going to the gym late at night and think it's 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 a lie, but it's not. Uh, it was just you know uh, a good feeling to see that all my hard work and those late nights and early mornings paid off. And those times that you know uh, I was down on myself and I just know that I beat the odds. So just 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 knowing that uh, just keeps me going every day. And just I just wanted to you know show people in my especially from me being home. Like, I just wanted to show the people in my community, all the little kids, that you could do anything as long as you put your mind to it. Because I was doubted and, and nobody thought I would be in the position I'm in, and I made everything happen. Was there someone you looked up to or something that really kept you motivated, like you said, who was either a player in the NBA or is a family member that helped you out with that? Um, My grandparents, like, instilled, like, a lot of stuff in me. So, like, I just really tried to really be the – best person I could be for them um, my mom my brothers so I had a lot a lot of factors a lot of good support system you know keep me focused on the tasks that I had at hand especially with everything going on with like school and um, you know I'm just happy that I got to get a chance to achieve my goal and you are currently on a two-way contract with the Jazz and the Salt Lake City Stars of the G League. Do you feel like the G League has helped you to develop before you got to play in the NBA? Uh, definitely. Um, I I think the I think the the Stars helped me, like, it helped me grow because it was my first year in the league, and I actually got an opportunity to, you know, be able to showcase myself and. You know, it, it was just it was a it was a good experience being down there because you get to see the actual physicality or what the league is like. So when you go up there with the, the bigger team, it's like and you actually get the opportunity, you won't be so shocked. But it's just like, how can you not when you have like other stars on the court, people that you, you know, kind of like looked up to before playing. But all that has to go out the window once you start playing, though. But um. Uh, I just feel like my development from Hofstra helped a lot because we watched endless amount of film. I had great coaches, uh, and Coach Fairley, Coach Speedy, uh, Coach Mahalik, um, everybody on the staff um, helped me a lot. Coach Barrett, like, I just couldn't thank them enough for you know just like helping me with my with my workouts and you know just you know seeing that I was a work a worker horse and you know wanted to just help me and be there for me and. I couldn't. I just couldn't imagine what life would be like if I didn't go to Hofstra. So I appreciate those guys so much. 
And you mentioned those coaches or mentors that have helped you. Well, also today I got a chance to talk with um, Hofstra Hall of Famer, assistant coach of the Fort Wayne Mad Ants, um, Norman Richardson. And Norman mentioned to me um, saying that you had great potential and you're going to keep it going in the NBA. Can you speak a little bit about the relationship you and Norman share? And does he help mentor you at all? Oh, man, that's my guy. Um, I, I call him just to check on the family. You know, we don't even really talk about basketball so much. Um, with him, it's just all love. And especially, you know, with us being uh, kind of in the same position, being at Hofstra and getting to the NBA, I ask him a lot of questions. And and I just try to pick his brain about a lot of, st- a lot of stuff. But... It mostly be it mostly will be about uh, just how's your family doing, how's how's the wife, how's how's your son doing, or how's my daughter doing. So it's it's all genuine. We we just I don't know that 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 bond is special that we share. For sure, and you know, unfortunately, the G League season was canceled due to COVID nineteen, but that did give you an opportunity, an opportunity to play for the Jazz and actually go to the NBA bubble in Orlando. What were your first reactions when you heard you'll be traveling with the team? Uh, my first reactions was uh, I was kind of I was kind of shocked because I didn't know everything that was like going on at the time, especially with uh, the rules that they were trying to make about the roster and you know the, the size of the team and stuff. So I mean, I kind of it was I kind of was ready for the opportunity to go, just in case. But I was kind of still like in awe, but. Otherwise than that, uh, it was a good experience just being there, and I was just happy I got a chance to actually be in the bubble. Definitely. And and if you could elaborate a little bit more about what life was like in the bubble. You know, as fans and journalists out there, we all got to look at what you guys were doing in the bubble, but we never really got to feel it. What would it, what, what was it like from a player standpoint? All right, so pretty much it, we would wake up every morning. We would have to take our temperature through a, a little app, um, that we have on our phone and it would go to the it would go downstairs to the people who deal with that stuff and then um, that would I guess you know the regular testing and stuff and then we had to walk around with our mask on out uh, outside when we get go to eat to like the different places and and the only time we could really take it off was when we were eating but um they had different stuff to keep us entertained out there they had arcades they had um uh, swimming pool, different areas like volleyball and stuff like that where people would just relax their mind and get away from basketball when, you know, we had some time off. So it was a good experience that, uh, you know, to have us all in there and that the NBA put together to keep us all, you know, safe and, you know, just uh, away from the madness for a little bit and, and, you know, for us to get back to what we do. Did you feel like you were able to bond and get some more connections with the teammates? You know, the guys you really didn't spend that much time with during the season now being up there with the Jazz. Did you feel like you were able to grow with them in a sense? Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely learned a lot more, I'll tell you that, because now I had the chance to ask questions whenever I could. And, and you know, just talking to these guys off the court, you know, because you see how hard they work on the court. And what you know, sometimes – you know, people need to unwind. So seeing what it's like off, uh, them off the court and just being able to uh, actually talk to them, ask questions, and, you know, even share laughs and, and stuff like that was just an amazing thing. Now, also during your time in the NBA bubble, we saw some of the playoff games get boycotted due to the racial injustices we see in our world today. As a man of color like yourself, what are your thoughts on the issues people face every day and that they have to go through? Um, I think it's extremely sad, everything that's going on in the world uh, right now. And, um, you know, it's it's a shame that, you know, we all can't get along. But um, um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot when you think about this topic, because as you can see, it's just it's just too much going on with the pro, uh, police brutality and everything. And it has to stop. And we have to be the ones to, to, to change it. We have to get out and vote. Uh, go out in our communities and just and, and just go out and try to make change because it's not going to happen itself. So we have to be the voice for for now. And you you just mentioned being the voice, and that's definitely a point that you guys in the NBA pushed to the forefront. You know, the message was definitely loud and clear. But did you feel you know being in the bubble with the rest of the guys that the message was able to be conveyed in the best way by boycotting the games? And do you feel that the fans or the 
people just watching the NBA were able to understand how you guys truly felt. Yeah, because you can you can tell in the way we we stood up for everything that was going on, because it, it wouldn't be it it wouldn't be fair to just for people to just go home and be able to just watch us as entertainers, quote unquote, on TV. Like we're people too. We have a voice and we have you know we have rights ourselves and we have to we have we I believe we have to do something and that's just my opinion. I don't know if anybody else shares it, but I don't. I don't feel like it's fair for you know this all to be going on, and then for you know people for this to be going on, and people just go outside and then expect us to just go out there and play basketball. Like, no, there's real life like issues going on, and change needs to happen. That is definitely a great perspective to have. I want to read something to you here that I saw on your Instagram prior to the um, the boycotting of the NBA games, and it says. You posted a picture on your Instagram account, and it said, quote, We are black men. We don't tear down other black men. We have felt the pain of being torn down, and we have decided we will be deliberate about building others. Can you elaborate on what that means? Well, first, we have to definitely start with ourselves. And, you know, it starts with everybody. We have to encourage everybody and educate everybody. And and it doesn't matter the race that, you know, we're all the same. We all have, like, the same or I want to say we're, we're all different in our in our own way but we all go through the same thing we all share the same blood like and we have to help each other it's not like you against me thing it's it's a we thing so everybody has to come together and you know continue to try to educate each other whether it's what other people go through or what we go through but everybody has to understand that that African Americans as a whole we're not we're not here to hurt anybody we just want equality and we just and we want the same we want the same treatment or we want fair treatment definitely and you know going back to your time at Hofstra how did you feel your experience was with that diversity and inclusion here um I feel like over the years it definitely uh honestly it definitely changed um I feel like throughout the years throughout the years you can definitely since there was you could definitely sense there was something on i wouldn't say like something bad on campus but we wasn't as a campus as a whole we wasn't really social with each other and until you know sports started to come together and everybody the, the whole campus started to really come together and you know socialize with each other and come to each other games and support so i feel like everything was starting to get better and but still think change still needs to be brought to campus and around the world everywhere so I, if, I'm going to try to do my best to help out around the campuses and uh, around Long Island and Queens as well, because I feel like I need to be better, especially on that part, it, to educate people. And I have to educate myself as well on a lot of topics. So whatever I can do or whatever I can learn or whatever people want to share with me that I need to read, I'm more into it. Now, you mentioned, you know, bringing the change to the campuses, stepping up yourself. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and what what brings that change? What can you do exactly? Um, I could definitely uh, just have everybody do more community things and show that, uh, you know, that we aren't trying to, like, you know, cause problems, I would say. We're not trying to, you know, I try to do something for com- for the community and just have us be together. Because that's what it's about. It's about togetherness, not about separation. So that, that's all I want to do. And... You know, you mentioned your daughter, Justin. You have a she's a young you have a young daughter and I I wanna know as she gets older, will you try to have these hard conversations with her? Will you try to inform her about how you felt during this time now and how, you know, people of color across the world are feeling today as she gets older? Definitely. She will de my voice in her life will definitely be heard, especially about this topic because she needs to be educated because this this is real life stuff going on, especially like we're living in uh, a pandemic right now, and this is kind of like crazy for me because I never thought I would actually be living through one. But you know, it's it's here, and you know, we're living through all of this stuff. And I would be scared to go outside. You know, I don't want her to be scared to go outside and be afraid of, you know, people just picking her out because you know she's black and Hispanic. That's that's not that's not cool. But all in all, I just want to make sure that you know. Uh, that she 
that she's an African American female as well, and you know she has a, a voice in this world, and she also needs to be heard. And Justin, if you can give anyone advice, whether it be male, female, black, white, about diversity and inclusion growing up, whether it's playing sports or not, what advice could you give to the younger generation about staying strong and staying motivated like you have to accomplish your goals? Um, well, first, you have to always believe in yourself and always be willing to help others. I think that's the most, the most important tool that you, can, that you can have, because if you're willing to help others, you're willing to, uh, to make a change in this world. And if you have, you know, a good work ethic and you have a, you know, you work hard in this world, you accomplish a lot. And lastly, Justin, I want you to leave our listeners with a message from you. What can we do as a community, as a society, and as a nation to create this change we need to, to live in a better place? It doesn't take anything to be kind and nice to each other and spread love because that's what you, that's what you will want. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Justin, for coming on. You know, this is the um, Diversity in Sports special show here on The Locker Room, 88.7 FM, WRHU, Radio Hofstra University. Best of luck next season. You know, I wish you your, you and your family the best, and I hope everyone stays safe during these tough times. Appreciate you guys so much. Everybody, please be safe. Thank you.